where Geiger questions why the man looks so down on himself. He tries to shy away from the subject, but she pushes him to explain what's wrong. That's when he spots his ex-girlfriend, Ona, going to the beach party with another guy. And it's here he's still pining for her. Geiser consoles him by insisting that he's not sweet for having these feelings, as a result of not being able to keep the girl for himself. But Archie, she can't have her heart and freedom. The woman uses herself as an example, explaining she's always up happy to see him, and tells the man to sober up as her new boyfriend confronts her. Alvaro pushes him away before he gets punched and knocked to the ground. He's made a complete fool of himself, and his friends have no choice but to take him away. Later, Nello walks up to the man's car and passes him an ice pack, but doesn't say a word. They both know he's screwed up, and the older man sits in the vehicle with him before Alvaro asks what's on his mind. But he's got no idea he'll be struggling to survive, and as the Dow is concerned, he can try to fight against the current as much as he likes, and get nowhere, or... You can move to the current to get somewhere. He's spending an awful lot of time trying to stop life from moving forward like a madman trying to stop the wind in its tracks. And it's this issue that's causing him to make bad decisions and push everyone he cares about away in the process. If he took a step back and looked at his situation more carefully, he might have been able to let go of his past and forge a future for himself. That being said, if he really wanted to get his ex-girlfriend back, He's going about it in the worst way possible. If he had access to wisdom of people have been following this, but Alvaro starts up his vehicle and tells his friends they'll meet each other again in the future. The next morning, he wakes up to an alarm on his phone, taking a sip of water and immediately spitting it out. He's nauseous from all the drinking he did and decides to head out to clear his head. Driving along the ocean, Alvaro listens to a voice message from his sister, telling him that he should try to call some time and to remind him that he forgot. Now realizing that something is about to go terribly wrong. Walking on the cliffside, the man suddenly loses his footing and is sent sliding down the hill onto a wall of dangerous rocks. Alvaro holds himself in place as he looks up at a surfboard before he's sent down even further by the sand. The man is terrified, and there's a good chance that if he falls, he's been smarter than him. He left the house without telling anyone he'd be gone or where he'd be going. And while it seems like a small thing, he doesn't know he just made the biggest mistake of his life. Whenever leaving the house, and especially when going somewhere a bit dangerous, it's always wise to inform people you leave behind of where you're going, the route you plan to take, the time you're leaving, and the time you plan on being back. That way, if there's an emergency back home and the phones fail, they can still He jokingly asks if they're still together and sits next to him, complaining about how hot the weather is out here. But then Ona questions why she was brought here to this place, reminiscing about a private dinner they had in the dunes. It's a reminder of better times. But then the woman insists that she's not in love with him anymore, and the surf is only going to do you so much good, and jumping into the ocean from this height with these rocks is just asking for an injury. If it were me, I'd try everything I could to avoid needing the time to wait and hope for the best. I'd try to slow myself down by turning my back to the sand and spreading my arms out to catch as much of it as possible. My backpack would even dig into the sand as well, meaning we'd get as much surface area as possible, helping us come to a stop. After that, it would be a simple matter of digging a path back to safety using our new platform position. The harder it'll be for rescuers to find you. That being said, there's still a chance we would end up in roughly the same position here, and I'd aim to slowly climb down the cliff to this ledge rather than jumping straight down into the water. I wouldn't trust the waves to break my fall, so I climb down to the beach over here and start to work my way out of this without hurting myself off a cliff intentionally. Of course, if I fell anyways, I'd aim to use a proper parkour land by landing on the periods as he manages the surface and imagines himself watching Ona walk down for the time. Noticing his real body crawling onto the beach, he tries to chase after his ex-girlfriend, but his wound acts up and he collapses to the ground. Suddenly, Alvaro wakes up, having managed to get himself ashore with an SOS tank written in the sand. But it's bad news to work. But it's too late. The force from the waves pushes Alvaro straight into a jagged rock face, and he passes out. Oh, he really should have been more careful with his phone in the book and put them back in the bag right after checking on them. In a situation like this, everything is a resource. He might not be able to check his email with the phone, but the screen is still reflected, which means he could use it once. So he'd be in slightly better shape to actually go swimming, and he would have given rescuers a better chance of fighting it if he stayed put, while using his phone to signal everything on needs for help. Now, if it were me, I'd actually use my shirt to address my broken hip, rather than my hand. I'd try to bind my hands together so that when trying to swim, my leg doesn't start flopping around the current and make my injury worse. While the hand does so, it sticks it into the newly created ditch. The server has no fresh water and urinates into his water catcher to hopefully drink his urine, but discovers it's full of blood, making it undrinkable. Later, Alvaro sits in the tide and presses his hand into the seawater to disinfect the cup.
Breathing out for the horrible pain that he's experiencing. That's when he throws clumps of sand over his wounded hand to stem the bleeding. Before taking shot fresh water, he places his aluminum foil inside of a hole and sets up his cup in a lock, using them as water conductors. Catching several drops of rain, he drinks his first sip of fresh water in over 24 hours and screams out for help, but gets no response. It's clear there's nobody here to rescue him, and the man is losing hope. With nothing else to do, he wraps himself back in his makeshift to pass out so he doesn't drown from losing consciousness. And this bird isn't helping at all. He needs to be focused on solving problems instead of focusing on not wanting to die. In a situation like this, it's natural to worry about death, but if the thought isn't serving you, it isn't welcome. This concept comes from an ancient tradition and was given modern form by Jeremy Webb, and is a powerful technique that Anthony Metavere talks about in one of his TED Talks. The best part is the basic method is super fast and easy. It doesn't take any special training, and you can...